in the moments of time in life when we're trying to figure out what to do in life to help people, to serve people, to promote our own professional practices, we have to look at what it is that we do for a living. When we look at what it is we do for a living, we also have to look at what are the benefits of what we do to an individual. If we're literally in the mortgage industry, then we are trying to help someone get the best possible rate so that they can purchase some investment property and literally have a place to live for the rest of their life. If we're in a medical physical art, then we're looking at how does the energetic forces around us help a person to heal in a different way that typical pharmaceutical medications doesn't do well. I've met some unusual people in my life, it is the absolute truth, but I've also met some people who are struggling to figure out life. When people are struggling to figure out life, it's amazing how few people go to God on their hands and knees. They don't actually say, Lord, what am I supposed to be doing for me? Instead, they go, what can I do for someone else? But a lot of times, what they do for someone else doesn't really help them. In life, we have moments of time to show who we are in the house of God. Whether we believe in a God or not, and whether we practice a faith or not, whether we have a spirituality or not, we are always being evaluated by the Lord Most High. When the Lord Most High evaluates us, He establishes, She establishes what it is that we're being evaluated against. And in truth, if we're someone who's outside of our own life and trying to control someone else's life, then most likely you are going to fail in your life. The truth is that when a person is missing someone else, they can lose life. When a person has gone through a struggle or a loss, they can also underperform. In life, we have to decide what kind of person we are and how do we help people in general to move forward in life, or are we a selfish individual who just thinks that their own opinion is more important than the God's plan in someone's life? You see, it's not a man's opinion that is conducted into some sort of action or performance that makes God's plan in someone's life. It's actually a divine, loving father and mother in heaven above that makes a life plan, a soul's journey, a lesson that an individual has to live through. What I've discovered as a person who observes patterns all the time is what incredible patterns we have. We have patterns in people's names and how those people interrelate to us. And whenever we meet a person of that name, we can almost figure out to a T how they're going to interact with us. I've also noticed there's the patterns in numbers for myself, and they may not be the identical set of numbers in someone else's life, but I know that in numbers there's patterns. And with those patterns, we get, excuse me, information. Now I'm a little tired because it's been a cold evening and a cold morning. And I don't have the luxury of going into my own storage unit because men in the law enforcement thought that they would play a game with my property and then decide, okay, we're just going to make it so he can't go into his own property. The problem is that's a violation of federal law. But they might have allowed other people in my property, which is also a violation of federal law. When I talk about laws, I'm talking about the political climate we're in, that we're heading into a political climate of the presidential elections, and yet most people aren't even paying attention. They're not worried about climate change because they've not taken it down to the personal level of what does climate change do to our food productivity and production in the land of farming, etc., and what does climate change do to our resources that are natural, such as spring water and fresh water, that many other lands struggle to have. In life, we have moments of time to decide what our rights are. Now, our rights are where our life begins and ends, and someone else's rights are where their life begins and ends. But a lot of time, human rights and people's rights and civil rights are completely overlooked because we're too busy and too selfish to determine what our rights are not at all because we don't regard other people's rights as equal to our own. In life, we have moments of time to prove who we are in the house of God. I say this a lot of late in my sermons, my audio casts, my Magic and Mayhem podcast, to try to remind people that in life, we have moments of time to make a difference for someone. And in life, we're representing whatever it is, the entity that we believe in, whether it's a divine mother or father, or whether it's something more native in origin, or whether it's something of an Asian religion, it doesn't really matter. What matters is how we represent that faith. And in that faith, we go forward. In that God's name, we do things, and in the life we have, we move people on in a way that either moves them forward in life or takes away from their life. 
There's always someone who lies, steals, and cheat another person today, and that's a shame. They have violated every aspect of federal law, and yet they think they're righteous. They think they deserve something, they think they're entitled to something, and they don't. In life, we have moments of time to prove who we are in God's house. And when you see a man who's on the side of the road, who might not necessarily have eaten for the day, what do you do? In my case, I had already produced for myself a meal through having a loving conversation with the manager at a restaurant and literally selling them something that they sort of purchased and that allowed me to get a meal. It wasn't exactly an official sale, it was more of a barter and trade, I suppose. But then after that, a loving woman came up and said, here, I bought this for you because I thought you might be hungry later. 